welcome to this week's how-to video. This is inspired by one of you who got in touch and said, Charlie, will you share with us how you do your food shopping? So this episode is all about food and I'm going to take you out and about with me and share with you where I shop. So the first thing that I do is on a Sunday, Simon and I spend a bit of time sitting down, going through our diaries for the week ahead, maybe two weeks ahead, maybe even the month ahead. It depends how hectic things are. But on Sunday, we spend a little bit of time just going through what's going on. And actually, if one of us is away, we try and do it over the phone so we know what's, what's happening. So once I know what is happening and what the plan is, I can use my meal planner, which I have shared with you. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you'll know all about this. So this is my weekly meal planner and shopping list, and I will link it in the description down below because it's available on my website. So it starts off with a freezer diary, um, a blank freezer diary to show you, um, helpful tips, and then um, my suggested meal plan and then there is space for you to write in your own so there's 52 pages so you've got uh, or 52 meal plans and then you have a note section a shopping list fruit and veg meat and fish dairy and deli pantry herbs and spices other and then total spend so you can budget what you are spending, which especially at the moment is really, really important, crucial to keep track of what we're spending. So once I know what the plan is for the week, I can sit down and I can work out who's where and what's happening and what meals that we're going to eat. Sorry, there's a little dog um, tottering around. So when I know who's here, what's happening, and I've planned out our meals, I then write my shopping list. And this is designed that you can either tear off your shopping list if you go out and about and you just wanna take that in your handbag, you can put the whole thing in your handbag, or if you do an online shop, then you can sit down um, and, and do it online. Now, the great thing about this is you can, like if you have a really busy week and you just don't have time to meal plan, you can go back to a previous week and just think, oh yes, that work, that week worked really well. I'm just gonna copy that. I've already got the shopping list. I've done the hard work. But once you get into a routine and a habit of doing it, it becomes kind of second nature and it makes life so much easier. You actually save a lot of money as well when you have worked out what you're doing rather than just, you know, being in like a rush and thinking, oh, well, we'll just get a takeaway or we'll just get a ready meal or we'll just whatever and grabbing stuff and you then tend to use what you have bought and you're not wasting food. And it's just, it's a real game changer. So setting aside a little bit of time once a week, I mean, Sunday works for us, but it may not work for you. Choose a day and try and stick to it. Get into the habit of doing it. And once you're into the habit, it just becomes second nature. So. When it comes to food shopping, there are various different things I do. And I will just talk to you before I go out um, about how, how I shop and where I go. So fish mainly comes from my husband. So we're very, very lucky. He has a fish business. And so um, if, if I want fish, I will get it from him on the whole. Meat from our butchers. And I was thinking earlier, when I was getting ready to, to um, chat to you about how long I've been going to our butchers. And do you know what? It's 15 years that I have been going and using the same butcher. And I think it's really lovely. You build up a relationship. They get to know you. They know what you like. You know them. And now I can just phone up and say, I'm on my way. Can you prepare whatever? if I'm in a hurry and I just don't have to stand waiting for them to you know, chop it up, slice it, prepare it or whatever it is, I can just literally pay for it and run, which is amazing. And obviously I'm catering, um, I'm not catering all the time, but when I've got a catering job, that is when I will call normally in advance and say, look, I need, I don't know, five kil kilos of lamb diced up or whatever it is. So that's gonna take a bit of time and I might not have 
half an hour to stand waiting um, for them to slice, you know, chop it up and prepare it. So that's just so lovely having a personal relationship with your local butcher. And there's, you know, local butchers everywhere. Now, buying meat from a butcher is um, a little bit more expensive than the supermarkets, but I know that I'm getting really good quality meat that isn't, um, you know, processed, it's not mass production, it is really, really good quality. I know where their meat comes from, they know where their meat comes from, very importantly, and I would rather have less than and because it's expensive and eat decent meat once a week than be eating not very good quality all the time. So that you know, is something to bear in mind. Um, I know that going to butcher is more expensive, but for me, I've made that choice for my family that I want to give them really, really good quality ingredients, um, produce. So that's a decision that I have made. And it's again, it's again, it's working out, you know, sort of what your priorities are and what your budget is. And when I was younger, I couldn't afford to go to the butchers. And so, um, you know, if I ate meat, it was, it was from a supermarket. So have a think about what's important, but building up a good relationship with your butcher, I think is really, really important and, um, uh, and helpful. So then I have got two green grocers that I use um, and it just depends which direction I'm going in, to be honest. There used to be a green grocers right next to the butchers, which was amazing because they sell bread and milk and, and dairy and things like that. So I could get pretty much everything, um, bar the sort of household, you know, loo rolls and, and other stuff. I could get a lot of our food and things just between those two shops, which was great. But now I have got two green grocers that I go to and um, I love to eat seasonally. So, you know, whatever's in and fresh. I don't like eating and I don't, I just can't bring myself to buy, you know, raspberries and blueberries and strawberries in the winter. I would rather um, freeze them when they're in season and have frozen berries than spend money on um, produce that's been flown all over the world and um, probably not going to taste so good either. So, you know, and again, that's something that I have chosen to do. Um, it's it's personal, personal preference. I do have my kitchen garden and I grow, you know, various things up there, which are either sort of frozen or, or we eat, you know, as they're fresh and, and um, ready to be eaten. So, I don't grow masses, but I, I like growing. I mean, I've grown all of our onions. Um, I've still got a few left, which is amazing. And I've just bought some onions to um, sow some shallots, some normal, regular green onions, white onions, even. Um, I was thinking somebody was talking about green onions earlier, buying um, buying them from a supermarket and they're green rather than white. That's That's where that came from. And red onions. And I've already planted garlic. So, you know, hopefully that will keep us going for, for a period of time this year, which is amazing. Um, and then supermarkets. We are lucky. We have got a Tesco's and a Sainsbury's in our local town. And they're sort of equidistant from here, so I can go to either. I tend to go to Tesco's rather than Sainsbury's only because... Um, I find the, the checkout, I just find the layout in Tesco's, the car park, it's next to the chemist, it's got a cash machine right there, it's really easy for me to get to and so I tend to go to that one over Sainsbury's but again, you know, it's, it's personal preference and, you know, things like, you know, dried ingredients, um, drinks, loo rolls, kitchen rolls, things like that. I tend to get in Tesco's. I do have a Booker card, um, which is a bit, bit like cash and carry, Costco. And I will stock up on things, um, but it's a, it's a bit of a drive away and I tend to just go maybe quarterly and get, um, get things in bulk that way. And then we have got a Waitrose, uh, about a 20 minute drive. It's just a small one, but I do, 
there are some things that I that Waitrose Waitrose um, products which I really love and so I will go out of my way to get those and if I'm doing a big catering job we have got a big Waitrose um, about half an hour away and I will go there and um, get things that that I can't get um, locally so that's how I tend to do it anyway we are going to go out we're going to go to the butchers hopefully it's open actually um today's run away with me slightly so i'm going to take you out and about with me and um show you show you where i go so this is the green grocers that i was talking to you about but it's more than a green grocers because they do refills as well which is really really handy so you can bring your own pot and you can refill and they've got an amazing selection of all sorts of things and they also have these as refills too so you know hand soap and laundry powder um liquids and literally all sorts of things which is amazing and lots of great products that are plastic free which again is really really super so i'm just going to stock up on some fruit and veg now I've just arrived at Tesco's and I have got my empty bags. It's really important um, for me <laughs> that I put my empty bags into the car after I've done a food shop. So I just leave them by the front door, take them out and leave them in the car. So I have always got bags. I don't want to be um, buying more bags and and using the plastic ones I just I, I hate it <laughs> I'm um, into into reusing as much as possible so I've got my bags I have got my shopping list I'm not doing a big shop in here today because um, I don't need very much <laughs> which is really handy I've just been to um, the fruit and veg shop the greenhouse and stocked up on fresh fruit and veg that we need for this week and I could buy them in Tesco's Yes, it takes me a little bit more time to go there and then come here, but I know that it's really good quality um, produce. And for me, I think because I'm passionate about cooking and food, good quality produ produce is, is really important. So where I can, I mean, I do buy fruit and veg in Tesco's too, but where I can, I, I try and support the green graces and I think it's really important to support these small shops otherwise they're going to disappear and I love the fact that the greenhouse has got all of its you know recycling um reusing um refilling the jars and all of it sort of you know it's it's really doesn't want to have single-use plastic in there which I love um I'm really passionate about so I love supporting them where I can. Anyway, I'm going to quickly whiz round Tesco's. Coco has requested leek and potato soup for supper tonight, so we are going to make that when we get back. The butcher's was closed. I missed it, but I will see if I can find a clip um, of my butcher's and I will insert that in here for you because I missed them today and I actually not around for the next few days so I will see if I have got that clip um, and we'll pop it in here so it'll be slightly out of context um, I hope you don't mind but I knew that I was running slightly tight on time today I actually had a couple of orders that came in that I wanted to get today's post so that waylaid me a little bit as well but I've got the post um, I've got the fruit and veg and so now um, now I'm to Tesco's so I'm back in my favourite place with my favourite butchers and getting a lovely piece of beef to have with our friends to celebrate New Year. I think that looks perfect. It's big. There's going to be plenty of leftover. But as I just said to Neil, you cannot beat a cold roast beef sandwich. But one thing I just thought about before I go into Tesco's um, is to chat to people and I know this might sound silly but because I have chatted to my butcher over the years we have built up a relationship and I will ask his advice we will chat and I think if you take a little bit of time to build relationships with people whether it's a girl on the checkout 
or, or whoever it may be, take a moment to talk to them, smile, and you get so much back from them. And I love the fact that the butcher and I will be exchanging cookery advice. And when I first started going to the butchers, I was not a confident cook. Yes, I had done catering um, and I had done a cookery course and um, mum taught me loads, but there was a lot I needed to learn. There's still a lot we all need to learn. And so I would say to the butcher, how long do you recommend I cook this? Or, um, you know, what temperature or, or, you know, just things like that. And that's how I built up a, a relationship, a sort of friendship. I think, I think of them as friends. And I think that's um, really good advice. I'm not a naturally really outgoing person. Um, have been quite shy and underconfident throughout my life. And so it doesn't always come easy chatting to people, but actually um, you get a lot from it. And I think when I started, this is going off on a complete tangent. I was not planning on chatting to you about this today. When I started doing Lee Linton's workouts, The Ultimate Shred, and we are going back six years at least, Lee said, smile, smile. If you smile, people will smile back at you. You will feel better about yourself. You will feel happy in yourself. And that is something that I think of frequently because we can all go around wrapped up, absorbed in our own thoughts and probably look quite unfriendly and quite unapproachable. And actually, if you smile at somebody and they smile back at you, it makes you feel good. It brightens the day. So that's a top tip for you, which I was not planning on sharing with how I shop. But anyway, I really must stop prattling and get in there. I'm back having done my food shops, oh, all the dogs, <laughs> pottering around. Now I have got my leeks. A couple of these were on um, half price in the, um, the, the greenhouse, which is amazing. And I've got some potatoes too. Now you guys know that if I'm cooking something I cook more than we need and then I can put it in the freezer. Batch cooking is the way forward. I find it so so easy to cook that way and then when I'm in a hurry and I don't have time to cook something from scratch I can just pull something out of the freezer. I forgot to talk to you earlier about shopping lists. So important to have a list kind of on the go. So, hang on, <laughs> I've got this and my shopping list here, but I also keep a list on the fridge and I've actually run out. I need to order a new one, otherwise I would show you. So I keep it, it's on a magnet. I always get the same type stuck on the fridge. And then when we are running low on something or we have run out of something, all the family members know to put it on the list because I, for example, I don't drink tea or coffee, so I don't necessarily know if we're running low on tea or coffee. So I need Simon to put that on the list and then I know to replace it. And I just find it really useful having that list on the fridge so everybody knows if they want something for me to buy when I'm out shopping or if we're running low, to put it on there. Sorry, the dogs are being really annoying. <laughs> Um, tottering around, um, I know to get it. And you know, you think that you'll remember, but actually you'll get into the supermarket and you'll think, oh my goodness, what was on my list? What was that thing? And you'll forget it, which is really, really frustrating. So it saves lots of time if you keep a list, you know, ongoing. Find a system that works for you and stick with it. And everybody that lives in the home with you, um, if you've got other, you know, you may live by yourself, but if there are others in the house, then get them to write on the list as well. It is a game changer.
got my leeks sliced in my pot and I'm just going to add in a good knob of butter to those. And I'm just going to fry these gently until they're, you know, I don't know, cook them for about five minutes or so until they start to soften before I add in the potatoes. And that little lot is for the compost. So I'm just going to pop these over here. Quite a few of you noticed that I cooked um, lamb tagine, which is a few weeks ago, in a different pot. And this is my always pot from our place. And I will link it in the description down below. This is a new pot that I bought um, towards the end of last year. It is very, very non-stick. It's very versatile and it's a lot lighter than a Le Creuset. It's slightly smaller than it's... It's a tongue twister. It's slightly smaller than my Le Creuset, uh, which is why I'm using it now rather than getting that out. But um, yeah, it's a great pot. I'm going to season the leeks with um, sea salt and some black pepper. Give them a good stir. My leeks have softened nicely. They are perfect. And I'm just going to add in the chopped potatoes. I've chopped them, you know, into rough chunks, that sort of size, um, but it doesn't really matter. And then I've got some vegetable stock in here. This is actually homemade stock. And I'm just going to cover the potatoes with stock. I may need a little bit more. Let me just get some. Cover the potatoes. Um, you can always add a little bit more liquid later on. And I'm just going to bring this to the boil and then let it simmer until those potatoes have softened, probably for about 30 minutes. Um, Florence. Florence has got into a bag. Um, I emptied some blankets out of my car. She's just decided to go and snuggle in there. Where's the lid? Here is the lid. The clever thing about the lid is you've got these sort of air vents. You've got that there, which um, you can slot the spoon in, or you can have it on there and no steam will escape, which is quite handy. The only downside is these handles, um, these handles here, do get hot. They don't in the Le Creuset, so actually I need to put my oven gloves on to, to touch them. But that is coming to the boil almost. Right, in to the simmering oven. That goes. Now the time is running away with me. I am going to feed the dogs, I'm going to do the school run and when I get back I am going to um, puree it up and then we will eat it for supper this evening. Coco is loving soup at the moment and I think, do you know what, there's nothing better when a child wants a homemade soup. It's packed full of veggies and goodness. I think um, that is definitely to be encouraged. I'm a big um, soup maker and I think it's a really, really good meal. She has a hot, you know, proper meal at school for lunch. And so actually, that's Florence. Florence! That's really irritating. Rustling over there. Um, to have, you know, a hearty bowl of soup with some delicious bread um, or toast for supper is actually perfect. It's just her and I this evening, so I shall enjoy eating with her and not having an early night because I've got lots to do. But um, actually, the lots to do will have come out before this, so you will have seen what I've been up to. Anyway, I'm going to get my skates on and feed these little dogs while those potatoes are cooking. I'm back from the school run and I've just taken this out of the oven and actually let it sit for about 10 minutes. You don't want to puree soup when it's really, really hot because it can splash and burn you. So you need to be careful of that. So I've just let it sit there and I have got some Greek yogurt here. I, um, I go for the 5% fat one 
I'm, um, how do I say this? I don't like low fat things. I like proper butter and, um, uh, you know, and, and, and fat is good. <laughs> the low fat alternatives are not good because they've got other things in them which aren't as good for you as the fat. So go full fat. Um, it's much, much better for you um, with everything. I never go for low fat options. So um, just scrape that yogurt in. The yogurt is optional, but I think it just adds that extra bit of deliciousness, which, which I love. Actually, that's cool enough. I can hold it now. So I've got my Kenwood tri-blade and I'm just going to puree this up. <laughs> Remember, always check your seasoning. I actually think it could do with a little bit more salt and pepper, so I'm going to add that in. Just give it another whiz up and I'm just going to check, check the, the seasoning again. That's good. I'm happy with that. So there we are. Our leek and potato soup is ready to serve. Now the leftovers of this, I will portion up into <laughs> down here, old yogurt pots label them and put them in the freezer and then I can just take a portion or two out and we can enjoy it straight, um, well not straight from the freezer, obviously defrost it and heat it up but it's just so much easier to cook, you know, when you're chopping some leeks you may as well chop a few more and peel a few more potatoes and then you have got, got extra in the freezer. Anyway, I hope me sharing with you how I shop, where I shop, how I do our food shopping has been useful. Give this video a thumbs up if you have enjoyed it. Leave me a comment below and remember to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I will see you on Friday for a vlog and next Tuesday for another how-to.